Hey everyone, it's Ronan Ross, here with another video tutorial for Legendary Game of Heroes, uh, Guild Wars. Uh, hope everybody out there is doing well, is healthy, and finding um, things to occupy your time. Uh, it's been a while since I've made one of these videos, but I've gotten a lot of requests to do some on the more recent decks, and having some time on my hand, decided to just go ahead and make some uh, tutorials about Guild Wars for you guys. So this is one of my more uh, one of my favorite decks to use right now. Uh, it is the one turn cooldown Earth Nuke deck. So the cards uh, shown here: the Ultra Rare Making You, the Ultimate Form Ridden Druids, the Master Collection card Prophetess Tenera, and the main card Hyperios the Resplendent. I don't have the support card here because I <laughs> sold it because I don't really need it. I do have the shiny Prophetess Tenera. I actually have two of the ultra rares, but in this video I'm just going to go over the basics of how to use it, assuming that you just have one. Um, I do have a full set of relics here, um, and you don't have to have a full set of relics. You can actually get by with just a couple of the event relics, the Earth Immortal Slayer relics, and you can substitute these relics with other Immortal Killer relics from other affinities. Um, just note that that will boost your attack and your health, but it won't allow you to gain intensity, which is like one of the most important things for this deck. So you want to have a couple Earth Immortal Slayer relics. Okay. So how does this deck generally work? Um, the one turn, all of them have one turn cooldowns. Okay. And the new cards do direct damage and they'll do more if you have more intensity and you have power jumps on the board they'll do it a second time and you just keep filling up the bar and doing it every single turn and the beauty of this deck comes from the ultra rare um, and the ultimate form the ultra rare has the ability to make six power jump threes as long as you have one power jump on the board and we'll see that in action right uh, when I jump into a battle the ultimate form has the same passive ability. Um, here the ultimate form is basically the ultra rares passive plus the master collection cards attack power. Okay. Now something important to notice here is that I'm using Prophetess Tenera as the leader of the deck. This is actually in my opinion the standard of the current meta which is to use a ultimate form or a master collection card of the you know these new killer skill types as the leader instead of a traditional main card who's actually giving you more GVG quote unquote uh, stats and that's because let's let's look at that comparison right standard GVG is 400% damage and HP cool Prophet of Snera, uh same as Red and Jura's, same as making you okay it's doing 300,000 damage 600,000 HP less damage way more HP this is actually the same amount of health that you're going to get from an Ascended Dragoon, which is the most health that any card is going to be able to give you in the game right now. So, super important because this deck, and like many other decks, uh, isn't going to kill the first Warden. So you're going to have to tank that first Warden's hit, and you can't do that if you don't have enough health. And that's why having the Immortal Killer Relics is also good, because they provide health um, for Immortal Killers. And if you use one from a different affinity, from another affinity, it'll still help you. So let's just jump into a battle here, and let's just to show you how awesome this deck really is. So when you're choosing your opponents, um, just know that anybody with straight water uh, is definitely a prime candidate. Now you should always practice, because you want to know if the first card, uh, first warden that they have, will actually kill you. And this is one of my guildmates and his first warden will not, unfortunately for him. Um, so you see we start out with just all regular gems. So I match them all and the point is that it'll create this power gem 4 down here. Um, I, I don't want to use it accidentally, but it down here on the right bottom corner. That was the one that was made from matching those gems. Uh, so now, what do we do? Well, uh, you have actually a lot of options with this deck. 
you can always nuke or you can match the gems. So there's not that many gems on the board. So let's see how we can kill this guy. I like to work from bottom to up and since you're just practicing, if it doesn't kill him, you can just quit and restart again and choose a different, make a different choice. Um, but here, Hyperius the Resplendent will actually kill this first warden. Okay, he actually nuked twice, uh, but I don't think he actually did it for that one. I don't think he, he didn't even really need to. Um, notice that for the intensity, we're almost up to a hundred. I think that once you get over a hundred, you start really cranking out a lot of damage. Um, and as the higher you go from there, the more damage um, you're going to be doing. And notice that, you know, we have blind on us, but that only matters if you're actually matching the gems. So here, you know, again, now I have a full board of gems. Amazing. I have three cards that can nuke. Also amazing. I could boost my attack with making you. That's a normal way to do it. And then nuke. Okay. I just made 12 power gem threes each turn, okay, because of the ultra rare and the uh, ultimate form. So let's match the gems. See that fills up all the cards again, and you can see that I can now use all those same cards that I just used the last couple turns again. And look, we're already on the fourth warden. This match is basically already done. Um, I can nuke the rest of the way. I really like this deck because it's it's just so fast. You can get through a lot of um, opponents really quickly. Uh, I mean, either you win or you lose, right? So that's that. Okay. Now, something to keep in mind is that uh, you can only make more power gems if you actually have power gems on the board. Um, sometimes it's the case that you get really unlucky and that one power gem that you make from that for, from matching your gems um, gets cannibalized or it gets you know matched with two other earth gems that happen to f have fallen near it and that actually erases your board of any power gems or if you're facing somebody with chaos who you know like birthright chaos from palladium mothership that will erase your board just because that's what chaos does and then you're not actually making any power gems the next turn and then you can't actually uh, refill the charge gauge for these skill cards and then you're actually gonna die so one way to get around that is to include a card that makes power gems I mean it could be literally any card uh, if you want to get specific it can be an immortal killer card like quick and dirty so that it quick dirty will get the boost from the immortal killers um, it can be hard one gorillas, which is you know has a two turn cooldown, so you can use it more often. But the card that I actually like is um, United Tars. Why? Because United Tars has a three turn cooldown, which is reasonable. Um, yes, he makes power gems. Yes, he heals, but he cleans cleanses all deep buffs. So that blind that we had in the last match. He would have cleansed it. He can clean out chaos, and he makes power gems. And if if he's, his passive is that if the enemy casts debuff, which is you know like half of the wardens, um, it'll make a power gem form. So just passively, you're getting to make a power gem. Um, there's a caveat here, which we'll see in this match, which is gem silence and power gem silence. That'll also stop United Tars. But United Tars in general is a cool fifth card to have for this deck because he does the cleansing and will help you make gems in the situation where you actually don't have any gems on the board. Okay? So if you ever find yourself using this deck and it's not making gems for you, it's because you don't have any power gems on the board. So let's jump into this match. See, this is uh, Ronin Jr. He has all Water Wardens. I purposely set this up so that he he actually had a fire car warden in his normal deck um, so that's why you see the two fire cudgels but you should know that if you see something like this where somebody may have messed up with their setup uh, this is not going to kill you in the first team because first hit because there's only three water cudgels that'll never 
kill you in the first hit. Okay, um, so it's always good to test. Let's chop into this match. So you see, I switched to United Tars and I have 406,000 instead of the 470, so I lost like 70,000 HP from using United Tars because he's not an immortal killer and he doesn't get the buff from Prophetess Tenera. So let's match the gems. So you see this Power Gem 4 in the bottom, he, it stayed, everything's good, okay? Uh, but we got hit with gem sounds, right? Now, it's totally RNG totally random how much gem sounds on you. It could be on all your cards. It could be on, in this case, some of your cards. Um, so we still made gems because it didn't actually hit red and druids. Uh, I'm going to play as if I don't have any gems on the board, meaning I'm not going to match gems. Okay, I'm going to play through the first three turns without matching gems because that's what you should prepare for. So what do we do here, right? We need to basically survive three turns so that the power gen the gem silence, excuse me, will go away, and then we can get back to business as usual. So you can definitely practice and try and see what's the shortest amount of steps. I can tell you that if I use Resplendent right now, it won't kill that first warden because he's too strong, because I've already tried it. Uh, so now I would use Making You, who boosts Immortal Killer Attack, and then I can use the Resplendent Hyperius, the Resplendent to kill the first warden. So now we have to survive for two more turns, right? Um, if you're savvy, you can pretty much tell how that's going to work, because I have two nukes. I can use Prophetess Tenera, and then I can use Verdant Druids. Now, if I had had gem silence on all my cards right now, I'd only have like 12, you know, 14, 15 gems on the board right now, which would have actually been enough because um, all I'd have to do is use the denied tars and then I'd have all these gems. But in this case, you know, obviously I have enough gems on the board and I match. Uh, and then just like before, you kill them. I'm on the last warden. So that's what you do when you have gem silence or power gem silence as the first warden, and there's no other gem silence to follow it. You just survive until you can get to a later, uh, until the, first you kill the warden with the gem silence, and then you survive until the gem silence wears off, okay? That does require you to have um, at least two nukes on the team. So we could have done this with the other setup, with the other Prophetess Tenera, because then I would just have a nuke ready again. Um, but if you don't have that, you know, that's another option for you to do. So with, uh, the last thing I'll say about this, since this is just the basic uh, tutorial for this deck, is that the um, last two things is, one, uh, the best version of this deck is one with two or more ultra rares because they make the gems. Um, because you only really need two nukes to do damage. And the other last thing I'll say is the reason that you need to practice in general and also especially for this deck is to make sure, like I said before, can you survive that first warden's hit? This guy is all water, but he has all max cudgels. He actually has a ton of power. His first warden is four times awoken. Um, if you're not an experienced player, you may not understand that this is not the right person for you to choose as an opponent with the cards that I've shown. And here's why. Because, uh, very simply, his first warden will kill you, and that's why it's not a good opponent. <laughs> um, I'm showing you this because don't be discouraged when that happens. What you should instead ask at this point is, how much health do I need to survive? And you can tell by either equipping equip, equipping your team with a Earth GVG Relic, or using another team that you have that has more health than the team that you re, that the Earth team. 
could be the a dark team or fire team because the, the way the wardens work is they always do the same amount of damage so I'm actually gonna use this team I have here this is the actual team I use I have a five-star talent partisan which gives me insane amount of health okay actually double the health so I have 9,000 HP so you can and if you don't have that set up you can ask a guildmate or a friend who does have those cards to do it for you and just to tell you hey how much damage does this guy do right and then you'll know oh well can I take this guy down or not so I start out with 937,000 let's see what happens we go all the way down to 350 so that means this guy this first warden is doing 580,000 damage so you need 580,000 health to be able to survive that first warden so if you don't have a GVG earth GVG relic that's not gonna happen I mean you can max other cards it's not gonna happen um, so that would mean that you should choose a different opponent so that's all I'm gonna talk about here in this first video um, this is a really cool deck uh, hopefully I've given you some th ideas to think about and tips for you to use uh, in your own Guild Wars. Um, I'll be making another video to get into the kind of harder situations uh, that you might run into with this deck and how to beat your opponents with that. Um, if you have any questions, definitely let me know or find me in the game. Shoot me a comment in this video um, and hope you enjoyed and check out my other video.